different kinds of uh, evolution first we can see that you might have seen already that divergent parallel and convergent these are the three forms of evolution so in divergent evolution that is a de facto evolution that should come onto your mind so whenever we say di the evolution so divergent as the name says it is diverging so you can see that in a one uh, you know one street it's actually diverging into two different streets so that is the way it is divergent right so it is basically from one species two species are being formed right so accumulation of differences between groups which can lead to the formation of new species through genetic drift and natural selection so two main methods of speciation is by genetic drift as well as natural selection right uh, where the new characters are being evolved so subsequently the species diverge into two different uh, uh, species so it is what you call the divergence uh, evolution at the same time parallel evolution is the development of similar traits in related but distinct species descending from the same ancestor but from different clades so the same kind of traits uh, which is actually uh, evolving in two different clades is what you call the parallel evolution now the third term is called convergent evolution which is acquisition of the same biological trait in unrelated lineages so lineages could be totally unrelated but still uh, you know uh, in morphologically it looks quite similar big and functional similarity might also be there one good example would be wings of butterflies and wings of birds these are totally different uh, structures if you look at that the wings of birds or wings of bats another example so bat wings and bird wings are also totally unrelated phylogenetically or evolutionally but still it looks quite similar and functionally also it's quite similar but if you look at the deep anatomic anatomy of these two structures or three structures rather these are all totally different so these are something called convergent evolution so the divergent evolution or the speciation that leads to homologous structures so the traits that morphologically as well as functionally similar due to shared ancestry that is called a homologous structure so homologous structures are nothing but uh, structures that are separated by the speciation event you know so they are morphologically and sometimes functionally similar due to shared ancestry so whenever you hear the term homologous the so shared ancestry should come to your mind because the homologous sequences of structures are resultant of uh, you know divergent evolution or speciation uh, homologous structures could be two types one is called plesiomorphic while the other is called apomorphic so plesiomorphic means present in most recent common ancestor or mrca but lost in some of the descendants you know that is called the plesiomorphic character states some have lost it but it's present in the uh, uh, the ancestor for example poikilothermy that is cold bloodedness right or ectothermy for uh, mrc of reptiles and birds so the ancestor of reptiles and birds had the cold blood you know cold bloodedness or ectothermy or poikilothermy but now as you know the birds are no more poikilotherm though the reptiles are birds are homeotherms right so they are warm blooded so ancestors had it but some of the descendants lost it so that is called plesiomorphy while apomorphy means that ancestral character state so uh, ancestral character states means the MRCA, the, the most recent common ancestor and all of its descendants have that character state that is called apomorphy. So plesiomorphy is nothing but evolutionary innovations while apomorphy is nothing but ancestral character states. So among these two states, plesiomorphic character states are a lot more useful for phylogenetic reconstruction as we will see that later. At the same time, convergent evolution that leads to something called analogous structure as I told you the wings of butterfly, wings of bat, wings of birds. These are all uh, analogous structures because uh, deep uh, inside the evolutionary legacy they are not at all uh, uh, you know, similar or anatomically also they are not similar though functionally it's all used for locomotion isn't it. So functionally there is a similarity. Uh, but it's not really similar uh, or related as per the biological relatedness or the shared ancestry you see so traits that are morphologically and functionally similar even though there is no common ancestor uh, also known as homoplasy from the greek same form so amongst the sequences we usually call we we refer the sequences or analogous sequences are homoplastic sequences or homoplasy 
so phylogeny is nothing but a, a, you know it's an attempt to reconstruct the pattern of divergent evolution or the true or natural patterns right uh, it is basically phylogeny is nothing but natural way of uh, uh, reconstructing the, the evolutionary patterns so the true the real evolutionary trees or the species trees are remain to be unknown we really don't know what the species trees are if you believe in god then only god knows how the evolution came in uh, you know all in one sense any kind of phylogeny tree is nothing but a hypothesis you know the biological or scientific hypothesis works with probability so it's highly probable the tree of life is true but uh, it is nothing like probability can never be one you know so that is uh, why it is a theory so well it's only a theory is not a, uh, you know you cannot uh, criticize uh, the theory of evolution because it's only a theory but it's it's an it's an accepted theory you see so science works with probability though it doesn't mean that it's you know there is it's actually fallacious it's not fallacious you know it's accurate but it's still it's it's a theory right so though it is an accepted theory it is it is a theory right so in science the theory means that it is what is you know the, the factual as the current understanding goes this is the most factual way of uh, what the evolution is all about right so it is a direct extension of darwin's common descent postulation so the postulation means that if you look at the current uh, biodiversity all the biodiversity of the planet or the extinct species actually derived from one ancestral species uh, that has lived four billion years back that is what the current uh, you know the current uh, consensus the scientific consensus is all about that right approximately four billion years back so from that the entire biodiversity uh, on the planet earth uh, derived or if you construct a giant tree of the entire uh, biodiversity of the planet earth you can do that in a in a tree like fashion with a root representing that the first ever organism four billion years back so this tree is called the tree of life right so phylogenetic trees are hypothesis so that is the funda so it is not a confirmed one so the real trees are something called the species trees so species trees are always unknown unless you are doing some simulation the computation simulation otherwise species trees are unknown some people refer the species trees as consensus tree that is totally wrong or concatenated data matrix if you you know for example if you draw one uh, a tree based on one gene that is called gene tree so another gene gene tree number two the third gene gene tree number three so if you combine all those genes and construct a super matrix tree that tree some people call it as a species tree but that is incorrect species tree is uh, the, the the real tree or natural tree that remains unknown to everybody unless you do the simul, uh, simulation studies so phylogenetic trees do contains a statistical probability so depicting statistical probabilities inside the tree is what you call the bootstrap proportions or posterior probabilities and there are multiple ways to do that we will come that in later in this course so it helped to know the robustness of these hypotheses so uh, the, uh, of course these are all hypotheses so what is the robustness so in this in uh, in experimental uh, sciences the robustness of the, the hypothesis is uh, depicted by p-values, right? So, in, in a way, the bootstrap proportions are kind of p-values for the trees. So, true evolution is one in which the species is split into two or more species and therefore the similarity is due to their shared ancestry. So, as you can see, shared ancestry, that is the reason for the entire similarity because the evolution is divergent or one species splitting into two species so divergent evolution gives rise to homologous structures or homologous sequences and groups defined based on the homology is called the monophyletic groups so uh, monophyletic groups are the groups that define through homology right and of course monophyletic groups have one common ancestor and all its descendant at the same time, convergent evolution is evolution of similar features in unrelated lineages. You know, these lineages are really unrelated, but still uh, the features, the similar features can uh, arise. So, for example, wings have evolved in insects and birds, which are functionally similar for flight, but structurally different. Another example is wings of birds and bats, again, functionally similar, but structurally different. So, these characters are also called analogous characters or homoplastic characters or homoplastic sequences right 
as I told you homoplasty is nothing but a convergent evolution right so homoplastic or homoplastic characters are shared by two unrelated groups but not their common ancestor so the common ancestor of these two unrelated groups do not share that uh, features uh, you know for example uh, wings of bat versus wings of birds their common ancestor uh, you know an amniot do not have that uh, the same character you see uh, it doesn't have that wings so the common ancestor of butterflies and bird is definitely an invertebrate and that invertebrate did not possess that uh, you know the, the wing like structure so that is why these are known as uh, homoplastic character or analogous structures so groups defined based on analogy is known as polyphyletic groups so polyphyletic groups are groups that are defined by analogy or analogous evolution which are artificial evolution you see mm -hmm.